morning, family. Good morning. I hope everyone is not only ready for church, but excited about church. Excited about what God is gonna gonna give us. I know we say that every week, yeah. We, we always come up and say, oh, "Okay, please be ready for what God has for you today." And if you if you really take that to heart, and I know I say that every Sunday, but if you take that to heart and be ready, anticipate, be expecting God to just come and and love you. Be expecting that. Because He is. He wants to. We know He wants to. Right? We know that God is there and He is waiting for us to open our arms so He can just grab us and hug us. We know, we know that. But be expecting that. Right? And it doesn't have to be here at church, in this building, in this place. It can be anywhere. When we wake up in the morning, a lot of times before, or maybe before, or right when I put my feet on the floor, that's my moment right there. Where I just open up and let God come and hug me for a little while. But it can happen at any time. Whenever you are ready, call on God. Because He's always there waiting for you. Call on Him. Ask, I need help. Or thank you for what you're doing. Whatever it is. It doesn't always have to be when you need help. It can just be, hey God, how are you doing today? A lot of people, they don't... They don't believe that. They don't believe that you can communicate and talk story with God anytime you want to. And we know that God is always listening. God is always there and He's always ready and willing to have a conversation with us. So go ahead. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. See what He tells you. I think you'll be blown away and amazed at, at what God, what information He has for you. So please do me a favor, bow your heads with me and let's open up in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we say good morning to you, God, and, and Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for your love in our lives and everything that you give us every day, Lord. And we just bless you and honor you with all of it, Lord. We know that you are the, the creator of everything, Lord. And we just give it to you, God. Again, we just, there's kind of nothing else to say except thank you. Thank you for everything you do in our lives. Thank you for the healing that happens in our lives. Thank you for our finances, Lord. Thank you for our families, Lord. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for being able to walk around and, and show people how much you love them by using us, Lord. We thank you for using us to do that. Lord, today, Lord, we just say thank you for everything. For every single thing you do, Lord. And we lift up the hurting today, Lord. We ask that you bless them where they're at, Lord. You meet them and you remind them, Lord. Whisper in their ear, whatever you want to do, Lord. But go and visit them today, Lord. Go and visit them. Lord, we lift up the, the children, Lord. And ask that everything that they're going through, all the things that are going through their minds, Lord. I ask that you bring peace to them, Lord. You bring peace to them and you help them just keep following you. You help them to remember what is right and what is expected of them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this service today, Lord. And we're just humbled, Lord. We just humble ourselves and ask, Lord, that you just, you just take over, Lord. You have the service. You speak to the people. Lord, may you accept our worship. And again, Lord, today's word is just thank you, Lord. Thank you for every single Every single grain of sand that's in our life, Lord. Every single grain of sand that is in our life, we say thank you. Because we know that it's from you. And everything from you is good and great. So God, thank you again for this day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome, guys. We're going to worship today like we do not only today, Sunday. But we worship every day. Right? Every day. Because worship is giving reverent honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So guys, please worship with your heart. Worship. Give God the glory. Amen. Hey, I was praying all the way over here. And um, I woke up and my throat is so sore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why my throat's so sore. It's been like three days. But um, when I was praying, I... I was thinking in my head, 
this song, and it goes, when I think about the Lord, how he healed me and how he saved me, how he picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. For Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And I just kept hearing it over and over and over and over in my mind this morning. And I was like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> because if you think about it, right, it's not a, oh, I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to sing. This morning I was like, no, <laughs> worship, right? True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And, and that's it's just an action. And sometimes it's with music, sometimes it's not with music. And so um, what was on my heart this morning was, was no music <laughs> in the first part. So if everyone could stand with me, if you can, if you can, just stand. This morning, Father, we just shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for you are worthy, God, of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Lord, with our hearts this morning, we turn it towards you, God. Yeah, we turn our hearts towards you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just raise your voice and just release that this morning. Hallelujah. There's so much power in that word, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, over our lives, God, over our neighbors, over our brothers and our sisters, over our aunties and uncles and our moms and our dads. Hallelujah, we just release right now, God, a shout of praise over their lives, God, over Lord, hallelujah, that we have life in you, Jesus. Hallelujah, you are worthy, God. Hallelujah, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I believe that when we release hallelujah and we begin to praise you with every breath in our being, God, it, just as Uncle was just saying about the grains of sand, it says that your thoughts towards us outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. God, across the entire earth, your thoughts towards us, God, outnumber that. Hallelujah, that you are mindful of me, God. Hallelujah, who am I? I am a daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is what standing in freedom in the Holy Spirit is. Just proclaiming, God, just a shout of praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah, we release that to you this morning. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. Just begin to praise him with your words and your mouth. Just release that. Hallelujah, God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We just join in with heaven, God, as that angelic being circles around your throne continuously saying, holy, holy, holy. And again, and again, and again, with all of eternity, we just declare that you are holy, God. You are holy. You are worthy. You are righteous. Yeah. Worthy is he who sits on the throne. To him be all blessing, all honor, all praise, all glory. Again and again and again and again, we just praise you, God, for who you are. You are a good God. Every good and perfect thing comes from you, Father of life. And we receive that today. I thank you that your banner that waves over us is love this morning, God. We just glorify you. We, we stand beneath you. Your banner of love. We just stand beneath that banner of love, God. As it waves back and forth that we know that we are your beloved. Oh, that you, you thought of us. You knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb, God. You love us so much. And we rejoice in that love this morning. It says, enter your courts with thanksgiving. Oh, and praise, and we come in with thanksgiving and praise today. God, is today's Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, Lord. I love every person in this room, Lord, that you would just pour out, God. Just oh, fall afresh upon them. God, fall afresh upon me this morning. That we would be filled anew with your Holy Spirit with your love, with your joy, with your peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control, that we would be filled anew this morning and not just filled up like, oh, that's good, that's great, but that you would just begin to overflow right now, Holy Spirit. 
that this is how we're going to start our day, just overflowing with you, Holy Spirit, and nothing else. Because that's all we want today is you, God. When I think about the Lord, how he healed me, how he saved me, how he picked me up, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you are worthy of all of the glory. All of the honor, all of the praise. You make me want to shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. You make me want to shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor, all of the praise. You make me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor, all of the praise. You make me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he healed me, how he saved me, how he picked me up, turned me around, sent me holy ground. God, we just shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah over everybody in this room right now that needs healing. I just declare hallelujah. Holy Spirit, that you would come and bring full restoration. God, full peace. I just speak to everybody in this room. And I just say peace right now. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Holy Spirit, would you come and just flood their bodies. That there would be no sickness left in us because we have been healed. It says by your stripes we are healed. <laughs> we, we won't, you know, it's not will be, but we already have. And we just take hold of that this morning. We take hold of the new covenant that we have with you, Jesus. You as our bridegroom. Hmm. We just take hold of that this morning. And so I just rejoice over every heart. God, we just come into agreement with your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That you would renew a right spirit within us again and again and again and again and again this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I know I've been told so many times by Color Chris, worship means so many different things. Yeah, it doesn't have to mean a seven-piece band with music and microphones and that whole lighting. It doesn't have to mean that. It doesn't have to be. It can be whatever you want it to be. Bottom line is you're giving honor to God, period. Right? That's why it's awesome because every time Kayla comes, we're expecting her to carry her guitar everywhere and... As soon as she doesn't talk, she always sings, right? I mean, that's just the expectation when we see Kayla. And to have her come up and just say, no, 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 I'm going to worship God without any words today. I mean, I'm sorry, without any music today. And I'm just going to use my voice and what, what I'm being spoken to. That's awesome. Amen is right. Because that's something I had to learn. I had to learn that Eric, worship can mean so many different things. And even though I still struggle with that today, it doesn't matter what my struggle is because the word says worship means whatever you want it to mean. So however we want to worship, worship. We're going to continue and do our family prayer. You're going to do it with me? So please look up here with me. Ready? Begin.
Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. Bless and protect Israel and the city of Jerusalem. God, heal our land and thank you for revival. Awesome. Our declaration for 2016. Look up here, please. Ready? Begin. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Revelation 22, 17. And our verse for 2016, actually, we have two verses, right? Ready? Begin. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And I love that. The grace of God. May the grace of God bless each one of you and go and be with you all the time. Every time. Actually, you know what is even more awesome? Is that God has given me the authority to tell everybody that. Even you. God's given you the authority to go out and tell people the same thing. Go be blessed by God's grace. Go and be blessed by God's grace. Go and be blessed by God's grace. That is, that is awesome. Our word for 2016? Freedom. 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 2 Corinthians 3.17, John 8.32. And we've talked about this. Freedom from all of it. I like to say that. Freedom from all of it. Because freedom in the Lord means we can, we, we're not tied up. We're not bound by anything anymore. We're not held down. We're free to, to do what we need. I know so many people, they, they start praying to God, please help us with finances. You know what? God's given you your finances for what He thinks you need. We have freedom from that. Freedom from the stress. Freedom from, freedom from being held down. Simple as that. Because we know that we can ask God, we can worship, we can talk to God, we can ask for help. We have an avenue of help so that we don't have to be held down anymore. Amen. You guys remember the most, the most holy thing in all the word is the Bible. And we, again, we will never, ever, 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 ever take it as a light matter when we open up God's word and read it. Many times, you might have come from a church where they open the Word of God and people stand. They stand in honor of God's Word. That's something biblical. We see that out of the book of Nehemiah. You know, I think that, again, uh, with, in today's spiritual climate, they have, uh, they're looking for every reason not to believe in the Bible. Because then they can just make up whatever they want. But we, again, we always, with God's help, will continue to honor God's word, even above his name, as the song says. Today is Valentine's. It's the day of love. Again, I think that so many people uh, have so many definitions of love, especially with, uh, in today's culture. But the Bible clearly defines love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. The Bible also says about love that it's the greatest gift that God gives to someone. It's the greatest spiritual gift that you and I can receive is the gift of love. The love from the Bible, starting in verse 4, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love is not boastful, love is not proud, love is not rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable, and love keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful, and love endures through every circumstance. The definition of love from God's Word. May you and I again experience and share God's love. Because it's the most important thing. Above every single spiritual gift, he says, if you do not have love, you are like a, 
instrument out of tune, like a clanging cymbal. You're just a noise. He said, though you can interpret, though you can share, though you can do all these supernatural things, if you don't have love for nothing. And so again, on this day of Valentine's, may we, you and I, what we've received as God's greatest gift, share it with people. Not just on a day where they've, uh, they make you buy a whole bunch of things at the store and all that. I've been going from store to store to store, looking at all the wonderful Valentine's things, and it's, uh, you can literally go broke just buying all the things for Valentine's. They've got so many things in so many places, and people are selling everything that you can imagine, right, for Valentine's. Probably billions of dollars worth of stuff. And I thought about all the candy that uh, we paid a whole bunch of money for this week, it all goes on sale tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, shucks, I would, <laughs> I would get all that same candy for next to nothing tomorrow. But, uh, you know, again, on, on a day like today, I think about, um, I think about the, I think about the people who are in love, the marriages, the people who are going to get married. And I think about that and say, man, God's blessings of even greater love upon their marriages. God's blessings upon those who are preparing for marriage, their families, their children. I think about those people who, um, who don't have anybody else to share love with right now. And I think about may God's love be ever close to them. I think about the uh, young man or young woman who got nothing for Valentine's from no one. And I, I think about, you know, the, the pretty girl or the handsome boy who got uh, teddy bears and flowers and candy from everybody. But I think about, I think about that young woman or young man who got nothing from nobody. And I want to say uh, that God has made you beautiful and that God loves you. And that no matter what other people say about love, what real love is, love is in a, you know, chocolates and roses <laughs> love is a person okay his name is jesus and so may god's love may god's <coughs> love be with you uh, today during this week uh we have seen countless signs and wonders we have seen countless miracles happen unimaginable things have happened all week and uh, I do, again, just thank God, like Pastor Eric was saying, because those are the things that, uh, that we know, man, God is doing. That's 2016. 2016. Is God speaking to you? Are you doing what he asked you to do? It's 2016, man. It's exciting. Is he directing you, man? Is he just blowing your mind everywhere you go? And, and we're seeing it. 2016 is a dynamic time. But we're seeing God demonstrate signs and wonders. I know that uh, this last week, uh, I was here in downtown Hilo and I seen Pastor John Jeffs from uh, the United Kingdom or England uh, walking downtown, which reminded me that there is a group of men and women that have come in from all around the world to Hilo. And they have been at a pastor's conference hosted uh, by uh, Pastor Bob and Semi Holyfield <laughs> there at the 90 Mile uh, Gardens and Conference Center. But I wanted, Auntie Luella has been uh, there at the conference this week and I wanted her to come up and share um, what uh, God is doing uh, through the body of Christ. Because you remember the body of Christ isn't just a church, isn't just a town. The body of Christ is from all around the world. And we know that brothers and sisters came in from all around the world. I don't know how many pastors are here this year, but they came in from all around the world and they're here this week. And so, Auntie, if you can come up and share with us some of those things that uh, happened this week at the pastor's conference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome week we've had. And yet, Dutchie and I were at all the conference, uh, the conferences it started Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. It's free except for the last night of the banquet where you have to pay for your dinner. But it was an awesome time. There's 20, uh, Semi Holyfield and her husband Bob, their ministry is to bring these pastors from all over the world. 
and this year they had 23 pastors and they do visit different churches and they share God's word and when they are given a chance to speak before us at the conference they are given only a few minutes 15 minutes per person because they'll have probably four or five speakers lined up to bring the word but it's the word and what is the, the, the word for um, their word for their conference this year is freedom that's our word for the year how in sync can Aloha Chapel be with the rest of the world hallelujah freedom and what is this here that they say we're too busy everybody's busy and it's true I'm busy and a lot of us are just going here going there doing things people that are retired are a lot more busier now than when they worked isn't that the truth but everybody's busy but they're not spending enough time in God and that's where our freedom comes from the word hallelujah but the miracles that we saw this week people getting healed people being releasing a lot of stuff that they've hung on to what an awesome conference to be full leaving there and be filled with the word every day going home and just sleeping in peace just just remembering all that I've heard all day it's an awesome week that I've had a blessed blessed week for everyone not just me everyone that was there at the conference and I would encourage you all if you can come next year it's free you can come and listen they've been coming I didn't know that she's been bringing people here to this island for 28 years I've only attended the last three four years and it's always been awesome so I thank you Lord for all that has come through today touching everyone that has gone to that conference Lord bless them Lord continue to pour down on these pastors a lot of them have left and I, I know I know they're home safe tonight and there's going to be John Jeffs this evening Lord God Almighty with Patrick and Heather at Kingdom Culture this evening so if anyone wants to come and join us come along they'll be there with God's heart with God's love with God's passion in Jesus name I say amen, amen. I want to share something with you that um, that I feel there was something that happened uh, with Auntie and I the other night. But I feel that it is uh, a rhema or a word for us today. So the other night Auntie was at the conference and we were in town and we literally experienced again countless miracles in a very short amount of time. Everywhere we went, God was just boom, boom, boom. I'm not gonna get into all of that, but it was Kayla and I, wherever we went, God was doing amazing things blew our mind however at the end of the night this is how God summed it up Santa said Chris come by I have something for you to pick up so we went over there and I had uh, you know again as I said earlier we were doing our Valentine's shopping and so I had uh, I had two bags of uh, candy chocolate candy and uh, as I went and we pulled up at Auntie's house there in Paneava, I held my, uh, the bags behind my back like this. And I said, uh, I said, Auntie, choose which hand you would like. In one I had, uh, you know, one bag of candy and the other I had another bag of candy. And Auntie, in all of her wisdom, said, Chris, I want both hands and so I had to pull out both bags I had two bigger bags in this but two big bags of uh, candy then and I had to just release it to her why because she asked for both and I thought I just as I was as she was taking the candy and smiling and laughing she's like thank you so much it's 10 o'clock Friday night or 10 30 at night She's just laughing and like, woo, I scored two bags of candy. And I was like, how did that happen? How did, you know? And the Holy Spirit said, Chris, sometimes, sometimes people are asking me for just one hand when I actually have a double blessing for them. And, and God says this in his word, you have not because you ask not. Right? 
You have not because you ask not. Which means what? That you don't get the double blessing. You don't get the full measure of God's blessing in your life because you're not asking for it. See, the thing that blew me away about what Auntie did the other night, man, is she just said, Chris, I want what you have in both hands. I want it all. And I was like, wow. And she, again, because she asked for it all, I gave it all to her. How much more, God? How much more, God? We're not talking about pieces of candy. We're talking about all of God's blessings in your life. And he says, just ask me and watch what I'll show you. Just ask me for a double blessing. Just ask me for more. Yeah. Just ask me for more. Just ask me for more. And you'll see it. You'll see it. So that was something, Auntie, again, I am so grateful to you for how God uses you to speak to my life through simple things like, hey, I like both bags of the candy. Give it up. Give it up. Okay? But God has a life lesson for you and I today. He wants to give you. Not to you. You know what I mean. Okay? Can we receive that? Can we receive that in Jesus' name? Can we receive that, that word? So a lot of the times when God gives you that word, it's, again, the Greek word is rhema. And rhema means it's just a fresh word. You ever go someplace and you just, you feel and you hear and you go, hmm. And then all of a sudden you hear this small, still voice. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. It's a rhema, okay? Many other blessings, many other miracles happened the other night. But I feel that God wanted me to focus on that one blessing. Thank you, Auntie. For, um, and then this morning she said she was going to bring the candy, but she would forget. And so I said, I'm going to go to her house later and eat candy. Okay? Again, on this day of love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. That is the true biblical definition of love. Not what the world calls love, but what the Bible calls love. Okay? Love is the greatest gift that you and I, remember a gift, all you can do is receive it, right? It'd be silly if I try to buy a gift, all you can do is receive it, and then even beyond that, we have the privilege to share the gifts, the gift of love that have been shared with us. Today's message, okay? Again, one of the reasons why we have for years always taught from the Bible is this, I don't come up and give you guys a bunch of fancy stories, but we go through the Word of God. Every time you come here, we open the Bible, talk about the Bible. And so we take a seed or a thought that's been planted in our hearts and we share it from the Bible. Today, we're gonna to talk about three stories from the Bible. But the, the word for today is you are one choice away from your testimony. You are one choice away from your testimony. Today, in today's day and age, you know, uh, as Christians, we always talk about testimony, testimony. So what does testimony mean? Testimony for a Christian means this. Testimony, when we share it, means God's proof. Yeah. Okay? A testimony is God's evidence, God's demonstration, God's statement, or even this, God's authentication, okay? Big words to just say this. When God does something in your life, and it's God, nobody else can get credit. It's God. You're like, hey, Chris, what happened in your life? How come everything would change? Bruh, there's a testimony in my life. And many of you, again, know God's testimony in my life. He continues today to testify in my life. He continues today to demonstrate. He continues today to cause evidence. He continues to uh, show proof, right? God is continually testifying in your life and in my life today. Why? Because he says about the person of the Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit, will testify of whom? 
of me, Jesus, in you and I. Okay, so we talk about testimony. We're not talking about like a courtroom. We're not talking about a deposition. When we're talking about a testimony in this context, we're talking about, okay, God's proof, God's evidence, his demonstration, his statement, his authentication in your life. Okay, you're one choice away from your testimony. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 36. I'm just going to read it out of the New Living Translation, but Matthew chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If not, you can just listen. It might be a familiar story or a story that you've never heard before, or maybe you're going to hear something different. But it says here in Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 22, okay, he says this. You remember Matthew? Matthew is the author of, right, the gospel of Matthew. And so he's just talking about accounts or writing down accounts about the life of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, what Jesus did, what he said. Here, in this particular story, it's going to include uh, Peter, okay? He says this, starting in verse 22, out of the New Living Translation, immediately after this, after feeding about 5,000 people, Jesus insisted that his disciples get into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, Tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped, then the, then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret, where the people recognized Jesus. The news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him, to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe and all who touched him were healed. Just a few verses, just one small story of an incident that happened in the evening with Jesus and his followers. But we see here again, you're one choice away from your testimony. You're one choice away of God demonstrating or bringing proof in your life, okay? So we look at this story and we see here, the first thing is Peter and the others, Peter sees Jesus, okay? They see someone, they thought it was a ghost, but they see someone coming across the water. So Peter sees Jesus. The second thing was Peter asked Jesus. He says, Jesus, if that is you, then call me out of the boat. If that's you, Jesus, call me out. Jesus did exactly what he asked for. He said, Peter, it's me. Come. Okay? The third thing, and here's the testimony. Peter gets out of the boat. But more importantly, what happens? He walks on water. You see, there was a step-by-step -step process. But there, was, man, there came a time. There came a time in that story where what? Where, man, he had to do... He had to... Right? Apply all of those things. He said, man, Jesus, if that's you, then call me out. Okay, he called me out. 
But there came a time where, right, the testimony came, he walked on water. And again, in today's day and age, I wonder how many people saying that, hey, Jesus, is that you? Jesus said, yeah, that's me. Then he says, hey, if that's you, then do this. And you ask him for something, then he does it. And they're still stuck at point two. And God wants them to get out of the boat. God wants them to take a step of faith. God, God is asking them, haven't I showed you everything else? And they're over there. And again, today, God wants to bring a testimony, a testimony, his story in your life. He wants to demonstrate his story in your life today. Okay? Question to ask yourself, what is the testimony that God wants in your life? There's something that God is asking. There's a desire in your heart. There's something that God is doing in your life. And he's saying, what? Man, what, what do you want? What's, what's the testimony that God desires? God knows what you desire, right? It says in the word, right, that God gives you the desires of your heart. So he's fully aware of what your desire is. His desire is much greater than yours. Okay? Okay. So I'm saying here, God, this is what I'm asking for. God, God's, you know, answer is much bigger than that. And so I think about today, what is the testimony that God wants in your life? And I say this individually because it always starts, even though there was a group of people on the boat called the followers of Jesus or the disciples of Jesus, there was one guy on the boat that he knew would get out. There was one person on that boat that he was, he was saying, hey, and Peter was that person saying, hey, guess what? Yeah, that's you, right? Had all the other people on the boat. But again, it's an individual question. What is the testimony that God wants in your life? Again, testimony, God's evidence, God's proof, man. God's demonstration in your life. The second story this morning, family, is found in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, just a few pages over. We're going to read just a few verses. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. You can turn there in your Bibles if you don't have Bible, just listen. Normally I have the words up here, but we're just going to read it this morning. Okay? Luke chapter 19. Here's the second story. <coughs> Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. It says in verse 1 of Luke 19, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus. But he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed up a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious singer, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and save who? Those who are lost. Real easy to follow along story. We can picture it in our mind. A crowd's coming. Jesus is coming. He's in a specific place. Right? Short guy, can't see him, climbs up a tree, right? As he walks by, Jesus looks up and says, Hey, Zacchaeus, calling him by name, come out. And I'm going to go cow-cow at your house today. Okay? 
real simple story. And I love stories like this because you see, it's, it's stories that you and I can relate to in our life. Here was a guy who was in business, right? He had the vocation or the job of what? Collecting what? Taxes. Says that he was what? Wealthy. Says that the moment Jesus says, I'm coming to your house, he had a change of heart. What was his change of heart to Jesus? Hey, I'll give half of it. It's done. I climbed up in the tree. You called me by my name. I'm going to give half of it away. And then anybody else that says, man, that I did something wrong, I'm going to give them four times as much back to it. That's what repentance is. We would call that repentance or we the Hawaiian people would say making porno, reconciling some things. Okay? What a beautiful story of Zacchaeus. And again, reflecting on the heart of Jesus. See, there was a crowd, there were other people, but Jesus focused in on one person and called them by name. And again, it is like that with you and I today. Some of you might be in a tree, so to speak. And Jesus is calling you by name. Okay? A couple things about the story with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Right? He hears that Jesus is coming. He's trying to look through the crowd. But he finally gets to a place where he gets elevated a little. And has a clear shot at Jesus. He goes, man, there's Jesus. I was look That's the guy I was looking for, man. Right? He's finally here. There he is. And so he sees Jesus. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Secondly, Jesus speaks to Zacchaeus. See the pattern here? Jesus speaks to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down. Hurry up. I'm coming over your house. We're going to have a party today. Right? What was everybody else's response? It was all salty. Right? Jesus. How come you're going over this notorious sinner's house? How come you're going over that guy's house? Do you know who he is? Do you know what he does? Jesus knew exactly who Zacchaeus was. And again, you and I are one choice away from God's testimony in our life. What was Zacchaeus' response? He got out the tree quickly. Zacchaeus climbs down quickly, quickly, and begins to make that testimony of God in his life. Again, you and I have the privilege. We're one choice away. It's one thing to see Jesus. It's another thing to hear Jesus. But man, it's really that one choice that brings forth that demonstration, that brings forth God's testimony and power, his story in our lives. Okay? I want you to write this down. The four things that can prevent and stop God's testimony in your life. Okay? So we see the examples of how it happens. You see him, you hear him, and then you do it. Right? You put faith in what he said, and then, man, all the action happens. Okay? But here it is. These are four things that can prevent and stop God's testimony in your life. The first thing is pride. Okay? Pride. There was an angelic being. His name was Lucifer. Right? He was in heaven. He was a prized worship leader. He led the angelic host in worship of Yahweh, the most holy. Pride entered his heart. And when pride entered his heart, then he fell from God's presence. One third of the angelic beings we call demons today came with him. They were cast out. They were set at that moment, right, to judgment. And you and I know in Revelation 20, verse 10, that they will be tormented and thrown into the lake of fire, and they will be tormented there forever and ever because of that pride. Four things that can prevent and stop God's testimony in your life is pride. It's the number one killer, man, pride. Right? The Bible tells you and I that pride comes before a what? Before a fall. Think soberly of yourself. Think correctly about who you are. Pride. The second thing is unbelief. Unbelief can prevent and stop God's testimony in your life. Did God really say? Did God really say? 
Did God really say? No, God said it. If God said it, it's good enough for you to trust it. If God said it, it's good enough for you to trust it. Many times, God speaks something to us, right? You remember Satan came and approached Eve and said, Eve, did God really say? Did God really say? Did God really say? Right? And then unbelief. Did God really, Peter would say, did Jesus, did you really say Peter come out of the boat? Zacchaeus in the tree. Jesus, hold on for a minute. Did you really ask me to come out of the tree and then come over to my house to eat? Right? You, you see that? No, no, no. They believed and their faith, right? Their faith released God's testimony walking on water. God's testimony in that home. Because not only did it affect Zacchaeus, it affected everybody else. That one choice that Zacchaeus made affected his home and everything around him. Again, four things that can prevent, stop God's testimony in your life. Pride, unbelief. But then here's one. Disobedience. Disobedience. We know that if you're a parent, you know what? disobedience is right if you were a child at one time you know what disobedience is your parents say hey clean your room and you go no i'm not like right your parents say oh we we'll do this and you do right disobedience can prevent and stop god's testimony in your life see god is always trying to initiate things trying to perform demonstrate some evidence in our lives but when we are not listening to what he already told us we are stopping, preventing, pushing back God's testimony in our lives. Okay? And then this last thing is self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is a little different than pride. Self-righteousness is what the Pharisees had. I see this disease in the church today. I see this disease in the church today. Okay? Self-righteousness. I'm, I'm a Christian. Oh, you, you did, did, did you know that? I'm a Christian. Man, right? And self-righteous. Let me tell you this. Those who were self-righteous in Jesus' day, Jesus, there was no testimony in the Pharisees and Sadducees. Why? Because they were religious and self-righteous. That's why when we see at the end of that story where Jesus came to seek and save who? Those who were lost. Those who were hurting. Those who were bust up. Right? We don't hear that he went in the synagogue and they all lined up for healing. They all lined up to touch the hem of his robe. No, we see some guy named Zacchaeus who was a wretched, who was a chief tax collector, hanging out in a tree just so he could see Jesus. And Jesus doing a miracle in his life. I look at go back today. God is trying to demonstrate, bring proof in people's lives, even inside the church. And what happens? They're self-righteous. I'm better than. Right? That's what the Pharisees, the Pharisees were looking at the fishermen going, Who are you to do God's work? Who are you? He would look at the, Hey, Jesus, you know whose house you're going? Zacchaeus' house. Jesus, you know that woman? She's a prostitute. Right? Every time the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were pointing out self-righteous. And what happened? Jesus was constantly using those kinds of people, those kinds of stories, those kinds of evidences to what? To change their mind. And they missed it. God wanted to do the same thing in their life, but because they were self-righteous, self-righteous, they missed out on God's testimony in their lives. Again, four things that can prevent, stop God's testimony in your life, in my life, pride, unbelief, disobedience, and self-righteousness. We're going to close with this last story. It's found again in Matthew chapter 9, all the way in the beginning of the Gospels. Matthew is the first Gospel. Matthew chapter 9, and it's just going to be just a few verses. Just a few verses. Matthew chapter 9, verses 19 through 22. You're one choice away. From God's testimony, from God's testimony in your life. Matthew chapter 9, verses 19.
So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe. For she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. How's that for four verses in the Bible? You want to go share a story, share that story with somebody. It's just four verses. Hey, you got around 30 seconds? Can I read you something? You know, and then just say that verse over their life. And see the impact that it has on their life. Because they heard those four verses. Hey, you've been going through something for 12 years. Hey, you've got some crazy medical issue that you've been struggling with. Man, let me, can I, can I just share this one little, and just share that 30 second story. Say, man, this is what happened. This woman again sees Jesus. Right? We know she's making her way through the crowd. We know she's here bleeding for 12 years and suffering. She's not the strongest person. Right? We know that Peter and all those guys are a bunch of fishermen, a bunch of burly. Right? You don't see any weak fishermen. Right? He's <laughs> some pretty stacked buggers around Jesus. And she's making her way. And she's finding her way to where? To one place she just wants to touch the hem she wants to grab the bottom of his robe and when she does that when she does that she's healed the woman sees Jesus she touches Jesus instantly the woman's healed by Jesus Jesus looks at her and says your faith my daughter your faith which means you trust. You believed in me. You believed that if you touched me, that you would be healed. Your faith has made you well. Amazing. Amazing. You and I again, we're one choice away from God demonstrating his proof, his evidence, his authentication. And I say that authentication because there's something called real and there's something called fake, right? When God does it in your life, it's real, real. <laughs> it's authentic, right? If God does it, it's authentic. She was healed. It was authentic, okay? God, again, his desire is for us. So today, you are one choice away one choice away from God's testimony in your life. 